Hello everyone, my name is Miss Roser and it is nice to meet ya. Today we are going to talk about... The Mona Lisa. And today joining me is... I am Brock. It's very nice to meet everyone and hello. And for those of you that do not know me, I am an art teacher. That is why we are going to be discussing art. The Mona Lisa is one of the most world famous paintings that is shrouded in mystery. A little fun fact, there is an LV that people have discovered in her left eye. Another little code. Um, but that's been attributed to Leonardo da Vinci's initials. He is the artist here. He never signed the painting, but people believe that is his initials. You can only see that with a microscope. And it has also been argued that that is just chips in the paint. So there's a lot of controversy over this painting. Let's talk about five really important things about who she might be. One, she might be a pregnant woman or a new mother. Two, she might be sick. Three, she might be a proper lady. Four, she might be Leonardo da Vinci. Five, she might have facial hair or hair on her face. All right, so let's talk about the facial hair or hair on her face. She doesn't have a mustache or a beard, I can just tell you that right now. Experts at the Louvre, Pascal Cott, he spent 3,000 hours just studying this painting. He spent 10 years examining it. All of his studies have gone to that. He invented Lumiere technology, and he was able to scan the painting with a high definition camera, and he found actually a painting underneath the Mona Lisa. So this is not even the original. He, Leonardo da Vinci painted this painting and then painted over it. He went crazy. So lots of Mona Lisas here, but he also found traces of eyebrow hair on her left eye, indicating that there was originally eyebrow hair and eyelashes on the Mona Lisa. It has been argued for years that this is a lady that plucked her eyebrow hair and shaved her eyebrows and plucked her eyelashes, but no, she actually does have the hair on her face. Very interesting. In 2007, Pascal Cott claimed that the hair is taken off of her face over time due to overzealous cleaning of the painting. They did not just take soap and water to it. Okay. It was the height of fashion in 1528 to like remove your hair on your face, but the Mona Lisa was not that fashionable, I guess. Um, it has been argued that the Mona Lisa is a pregnant woman or a new mother. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question for you. Yes. What do you think researchers found in this painting that made them believe the Mona Lisa was pregnant or a new mother? A ring. A veil or a baby? My guess would be a veil. That would be my guess. It's pretty obvious. There is a veil right there. Yes. <laughs> you can barely um, see it. So that's a guess. Maybe it's a line, but I would say that. There's also, and then there's also this this right here, which is more so what they were talking about as well. This like shawl veil thing. I'm not sure what it is, but it was a common article of clothing to be worn by women at the time who recently had babies um, or were about to have a baby. Um, this painting is also argued to be of a woman, Lisa Gerardini. Um, she is the wife of a Florentine merchant who commissioned this painting. So mm -hmm. um, she had she had children around this time, so could be she's a mom. Is the Mona Lisa sick? A little sad. Um, Dr. Vito Franco of Palermo University claims the mystery behind the smile is due to high cholesterol. Um, Zanthelsma, some type of virus, I don't know, due to cholesterol. There are clear signs of this condition in her left eye, um, and she might have a tumor on her right hand, but others argue that that is just due to varnish accidents. Um, also, she might have no teeth. That has been an argument because her expression is common among those who have lost their front teeth. Her mouth is closed. We don't know. Um, is she a proper lady? This one's pretty quick. Improper women at the time did not have hair on their face, but that has been proven wrong in 2007. She does have hair on her face, on her face yes. <laughs> but we just can't okay. see it. Also, improper women wear their hair down. But in 2007, Pascal, good old Pascal, he argued um, that her hair is actually covered and pulled back partially. 
um, due to scanning and we can't see with the naked eye, but right. she is a proper lady. Is this painting of Leonardo da Vinci himself? Is this in fact a self-portrait? Let's talk about this. If you took a painting with you everywhere you went for four years, Yes. And mm -hmm. then didn't sell it or give it away. You kept it in your possession this entire time. Cared a lot about that you, painting. You care. You care. Yes. Do you think it's of you or of somebody else? Personally, it's probably of someone else if I painted that, but it could be of me. An American scholar named Lillian Schwartz uh, says that this might be a self-portrait because his own self-portrait that he actually did make of himself can be superimposed perfectly onto this one. I'll add a photo of that here. Okay, who do you think she is? Um, that's a really tough question, so that's I, I really don't know. You can comment below if you have an idea of who yeah. she is. Maybe she's your great-great-grandmother. I definitely believe that it is the merchant's wife. I think so too. Time. That, that's a pretty so solid That argument. makes sense. I trust the researchers Thank and you. scholars. We are going to talk about a three different vocab phrases or words, three, um, that are attributed to the Mona Lisa. Number one, contrapposto. Contrapposto is positioning in which there is a twisting of the vertical axis of the body. Hips, shoulders, head turned in different directions and the Mona Lisa is exhibiting this. She is not looking at us from dead on. She is a little bit twisted. So that is contrapposto. Another word is sfumato. Sfumato. Do you see sfumato in this painting? Yeah. You do. You do. You see a lot of it actually. It's all over the place. And Leonardo da Vinci is kind of the guy that coined this style of painting. It is a technique which softens the outlines and creates hazy forms. Mm -hmm. And we see that like in her veil, in her hair, her hands are really soft yeah, right. and hazy. Um, not really harsh outlines, nothing's outlined. It's all kind of blended and perfect. Mm -hmm. But another really big thing is the Mona Lisa effect. So the Mona Lisa effect is when the eyes of a painting will look at you no matter where you are. So look at her. She moves. She moves. She's still kind of looking at you. Wow. But a fun fact is the Mona Lisa doesn't necessarily exhibit the Mona Lisa effect. Um, if you look at the Mona Lisa, her gaze is about 15.4 degrees to your left. Not exactly at you. Um, so no matter where you are in the room, she will kind of be looking about 15.4 degrees to your left. This is a phenomenon that happens when our minds look at a painting and we are able to see the whites of the eyes. Um, we are registering this as a 3D person on a 2D flat space. So we we think that this is a 3D person and we see the whites of their eyes no matter where we go and so we think that they are looking at us. If you look at a person in real life and you walk around them, you won't get the same, same thing won't happen to you because your brain's not playing tricks on you. Thank you for tuning in with our vocabulary and thank you for learning about the mysteries of the Mona Lisa. Next we're going to talk about how to draw the Mona Lisa. Alright, bye! Bye! Now we are going to draw our own Mona Lisa. You will need a pencil, a piece of paper, and an eraser. I like to use the white erasers because pink erasers often stain the paper. We are going to start with an egg shape for the head. We want it to be about the size of our hand. We want it to fill up the paper. So I start at the top, come down, make the chin narrow, and have a wide top of the head. The top of the head does not have to be perfect because we will hide it behind some hair. Now we're gonna section the face. I start around the middle to do a cross section. Um, that will show me where the eyes and nose go. The top, I draw a little upside down V to show where the peak of her hair is. And from that V, I come down the side of her face as far as I want to for her hair. I make it wavy. This side, I come and I get right along the side of her face. I just follow that until I get to the bottom of the chin. Follow that. And then I wave down just like I did on the other side. Next part's very easy. I just do a big U shape around the top of her head, wave it down, connect to that line I just made. 
wave it down and connect to that wavy line I just made. Now, like I said, the top of the head was not important. It didn't have to look very good because now we erase it. We keep the hair, but now we only see the hair. We don't see the top of the head. Take my pencil again, and now I start with the eye, which can be a little complicated. Um, I do a diagonal line, and then I do a V line for the eye on the left. Big curving line connecting, and then this curved line actually goes below that cross section where I gritted my eyes. I'm going to do a banana shape for the eyelids here, right above that horizontal line in both eyes. Now I'm going to do a half circle for her eye itself and I do that in the corner of the banana shape. This one actually kind of comes to the edge there but then I go ahead and just shade. The eyes are a little complicated. If your eyes don't turn out that great you have my permission to give her some sunglasses or to just keep trying. It doesn't have to be perfect. There is my Mona Lisa eyes. Now we're going to do the nose. Very easy. It goes between the eyes and the chin. And then we're going to do the mouth, which would meet between the nose and the chin. The nose was just a V. The smile, just a curve very slight curve with a little dot for the, where her chin is. Now I'm going to erase that grid very carefully, leaving the nose and the eyes. If I have to redraw them, that's okay. So I did a little too much erasing. All right, the last thing she needs is a line for her neck and she needs some shoulders looks great. Now you have a finished Mona Lisa. You can color her in or I challenge you to modernize her. I'm going to make mine into a nurse. Here are a few fun examples of different modern Mona Lisas. I hope you all enjoyed learning about the Mona Lisa and drawing her as much as I did. Stay happy and healthy out there. Have a great week.